I am Professor Vernon Kure from Uppsala University, Sweden. Good day to you all. First, let me tell you a story. It is a story about a mother and her children. Actually, no one has seen the mother, but everybody knew about the children. The children were beautiful and very successful in their careers. They achieved everything that they were supposed to achieve in this life but they were all handicapped. Some did not have legs, some did not have hands, some were blind and the others were deaf. Now think of each of these children as an engineering written stroke model. What we plan to do in this lecture is to separate the children according to their disabilities and closely study their features. By doing this, we try to identify the features of the mother who gave birth to these children. In other words, our goal is to find out the features and the characteristics of the mother of all engineering written stroke models. As I will explain later, engineering written stroke models can be separated into three model types. They are the current propagation models, current generation models and current dissipation models. The goal is to find out whether all these models are special cases of a single model. If such a model exists, let us refer to it as the current model or C model. That will be the mother of all engineering return stroke models. Before going into engineering models, let me tell you about the features of the best written stroke model that we can ever create. That is the holy grail of written stroke models. In such a model, we will have as input parameters the background electric field, charge distribution in the cloud, space charge distribution in air, and ground properties. We combine these input parameters with Maxwell's equations, the conservation laws of nature, physics of discharges, and physics of fluids in creating the return stroke model. The outputs of the model would be the spatial and temporal variation of the return stroke current, return stroke velocity, electromagnetic fields, physical parameters of the return stroke channel, and optical radiation. Now let us see how we create down to earth engineering return stroke models. We assume a value for the return stroke velocity and we plug into the model the return stroke current at the channel base. We have some idea about the channel base current from the measurements and we also have some idea about the return stroke speed also from measurements. We also assume about the fate of the injected current at the channel base as it propagates along the channel. That is, how the current attenuates and disperses along the return stroke channel as it propagates towards the cloud. Now the model is complete. Now we can use the Maxwell's equations to predict the electromagnetic fields. For a critical minded observer, this whole procedure may look like a guesswork. But I have to say that engineering models are the only models that are capable of generating electromagnetic fields very similar to those measured from return strokes. Definitely, there is some truth in the assumptions made by the creators of these models. It is possible to raise the level of assumptions made in the engineering return stroke models as follows. One can assume as inputs the channel base current, return stroke speed, and the charge distribution along the leader channel. Combining these inputs with Maxwell's equations and charge neutralization processes in air, one can come up with the electromagnetic fields as well as the spatial variation of the return stroke current with height. Note that the spatial variation of the return stroke current is a prediction and not an input in these models. Before proceeding further, 
let me show you the history of the development of engineering return stroke models. The first return stroke model ever was introduced by Norinda in 1939. He assumed that the current in the return stroke channel exists all the way from ground to cloud from the very beginning of the return stroke and that the current is the same at any point on the return stroke channel. That is, the current at any point on the channel is equal to the current at the channel base at that time. That is, I, Z, T, this one, this is the current at any point on the return stroke channel and this is the current at the channel base. Since the current at the channel base is changing as a function of time, the current along the whole channel varies with time in accordance with the channel base current. Norinda used this model to estimate the return stroke current from the measured fields. Note that according to this model, if the point of observation is very close to the lightning channel, the magnetic field at that point follows the wave shape of the channel base current. There are two flaws with the Norinda's model. First, it does not take into account the growth of the return stroke channel from ground to cloud. Second, it assumes that at a given time, the current at any point on the channel is identical. The latter actually violates the fact that the speed of propagation of the information in space is finite and is equal to the speed of light. That is, there is no way for the current along the whole channel to adjust instantaneously as the time flows. The model of Bruce Gold corrected the first deficiency by assuming that the return stroke travels upwards with finite speed. However, in the model, it is assumed that at any given time, the current along the return stroke channel is the same and as in the Norinda's model, the current changes as the current at the channel base varies with time. Note that this equation where this is the current at any point on the return stroke channel, this is the channel base current, but the current at any given point exists for times greater than Z divided by V. Z is the height of the point of observation and V is the speed. That means Bruce and Gold, they took into account the finite propagation speed of the return stroke. In 1964, Dennis and Pierce made a real breakthrough in return stroke modeling by introducing an engineering return stroke model which corrected the deficiencies of the previous models. In this model, they assume that a return stroke is initiated by an upward propagating potential front or return stroke front that prepares the path for the propagation of the return stroke current. This potential front propagates upwards with a speed V. Along the path prepared by the potential front and behind it, the return stroke current propagates with speed U. Thus, no current exists above the potential front. Observe that there are two speeds associated with this model. For example, the current at any given point on the return stroke channel given by this is a product of two functions. And this is the upward moving current. It is moving with speed u. And this represents the upward moving potential front and it is moving with speed V. And this function H here represents a step function. First, let me show you a mechanical analog of Dennis and Pierce model. <laughs> Consider a uniform water jet that shoots forward with a speed U. In front of the jet, there is a target that travels with speed v. Now, if u is equal to v, then the water jet travels forward unhindered 
and without any distortions. However, if u is greater than v, then the water gets strike the target and water will be spilled sideways at the target. In the model, the water jet represents the upward moving current and the target represents the upward moving return stroke front. Let us now consider the case where the front speed is less than the current speed in the Dennis and Pierce model. In this case, the current will be chopped at the front and as in the case of the water jet, where the water splashes at the moving target, the charges will be deposited along the return stroke channel. The chopping of the front at the return stroke front leads to a current discontinuity at the front. For example, current discontinuity. So this is due to the chopping of the current front. Here you have the current discontinuity. So at the front, charges will be deposited along the return stroke channel. If we make the current speed infinite in the Dennis and Pierce model, the current that will be fed at the channel base will appear instantaneously at any given point on the return stroke channel below the return stroke front. That is, at any given instant, the current will be the same below the return stroke front. You can see immediately that this is nothing but the Bruce and Golde model. Now let us consider the case where the current speed is the same as the front speed. In this case, the current travels without any hindrance along the return stroke channel. That is, it will travel along the channel without any attenuation or chopping. However, as in the case of the water jet, no charges will be deposited along the return stroke channel. The current will travel without any distortion from ground to cloud. As you will see in a moment, this indeed is the transmission line model of the return stroke introduced by Human and MacLean in 1969. In 1969, Human and MacLean introduced the transmission line model of the return stroke. Actually, this is a special case of Dennis and Pierce model where the current speed is equal to the front speed. Human and MacLean referred to this model as the transmission line model for the following reason. Consider a uniform and lossless transmission line. If you inject a current into one end of the transmission line, as in the model, it will propagate along the transmission line without any distortion, provided, of course, the amplitude of the current is not large enough to cause corona emissions along the line. This is the reason for calling it the transmission line model. Of course, this is a special case of the Dennis and Pierce model. The major breakthrough made by Human and MacLean is not in the construction of the model, but in connecting the model parameters to the resultant electromagnetic fields. They showed that the radiation field peak generated by the model at distance d is related to the peak current through the equation given in this slide. This equation actually made it possible the remote sensing of return stroke current through the radiation fields generated by return strokes. In this equation, Ep is the peak of the radiation field, Ip is the peak of the return stroke current, and V is the return stroke speed. You may recall that at the beginning of the presentation, I told you that there are three types of engineering return stroke models. Now I am ready to introduce the type of models that I refer to as current propagation models. The main feature of this model type is the following. In this category, the model specifies 
the way in which the current waveform injected at the channel base propagates along the channel. For example, the model describes how the current attenuates and disperses as it propagates along the channel. Any model that provides this information as an input is categorized as a current propagation model because it describes how the current injected at the channel base propagates along the return stroke channel. The transmission line model and its modifications belong to this model category. There are several current propagation models in the literature. Of course, all the models that I have described so far, the models of Norinde, Bruce and Golde, and Dennis and Pierce are all current propagation models. A few more current propagation models, starting from the transmission line model, are listed below. First on the list is, of course, the transmission line. Then we have the modified transmission line models introduced by Nucci et al. and Rakov and Dulson. In the model introduced by Nucci et al., the current attenuates exponentially, and in the model introduced by Rakov and Dulson, it attenuates linearly. In this expression here, h is the height of the return stroke channel. When the current attenuates, to satisfy the continuity equation, the charge has to be deposited along the return stroke channel. This deposited charge will neutralize the opposite charge brought down by the leader channel. Therefore, these two models corrected the deficiency of the transmission line model. Here one can also mention the modified transmission line model introduced by Kure and Orville. Here, the authors assume that the current not only attenuates, but it can also disperse as it propagates along the channel. The function f here takes into account the dispersion of the current and the function a takes into account the attenuation of the current. And function f is related to the return stroke current at the channel base through this equation and this function phi, it's a function of time, it describes what happens to a delta impulse as it propagates along the return stroke channel. Now we are ready to introduce the basic concept associated with the current generation models. The concept pertinent to current generation models is first introduced by Wagner in 1956. According to this concept, the return stroke current is generated by the cumulative effect of corona currents generated by the neutralization of the leader corona sheath during the return stroke. The physical scenario that gave rise to this model type is the following. In the case of a negative return stroke, the step leader channel brings down negative charge from the cloud and this charge is stored mainly on the corona sheath. The potential of the leader core is very high and is close to the cloud potential. When this makes contact with the ground, the ground potential moves up along the core of the leader channel. This indeed is the return stroke. As this ground potential travels up along the core of the leader channel, the drop in potential of the central core causes positive streamers to travel from the central core to the corona sheet, neutralizing the corona sheet. As the positive charge is deposited in the corona sheet, negative charge is released into the central core of the return stroke. This process gives rise to current pulses, consists of negative charge that propagate down along the return stroke channel. Therefore, the current at any point on the return stroke channel is generated by the cumulative effect of corona currents released from the channel elements located above that height. 
Let me explain the concept of current generation models. Consider just one channel element on the return stroke channel located at height z. This channel element is marked by dz in the diagram. When the return stroke front reaches this channel element, it will release a corona current pulse that will travel to ground along the return stroke channel. This corona current will transport negative charge from the corona sheath to ground. This process happens at all points along the return stroke channel and the cumulative effect of these corona currents gives rise to the return stroke current. What may use this concept to create a simple return stroke model? As inputs, he took the charge distribution of the leader channel, the corona current decay time constant based on the assumption that the corona current is an exponential function that decays with time. He also assumed that the speed of propagation of the corona current down the return stroke channel is infinite. And he also, as an input, used the speed of the return stroke front. Combining these inputs, he managed to derive the return stroke current at the channel base. Actually, he did not bother to calculate the electromagnetic fields from this simple model. Now, let us consider the current generation model introduced by Heidler. Heidler used the same concept introduced by Wagner. However, the breakthrough is the Heidler's identification that the channel base current can be used as an input parameter and from that estimate the charge on the leader channel. In constructing the model, he treated the corona current as an impulse current and the downward moving corona current speed is assumed to be equal to the speed of light. The model managed to predict the charge distribution on the channel, how the current varies along the channel and the electromagnetic fields. One criticism that can be directed against the model of Heidler is the treatment of the corona current as a Dirac delta impulse. This introduced a discontinuity at the front of the return stroke current. It is doubtful whether such current discontinuities exist in nature. In the model introduced by Deendorf and Human, the deficiency of the Heidler's model was corrected by treating the corona current as an exponential function. They also assumed that the corona current consists of two parts, a fast component coming from the neutralization of the leader core and the slow component coming from the neutralization of the corona sheath. As inputs of the model, they had the return stroke speed, the time constants related to the corona currents and the channel base current. As in Heidler's model, they assume that the corona current moves downwards with the speed of light. The model could predict the charge distribution on the leader channel, the spatial variation of the current along the return stroke channel and the electromagnetic fields. In discussing this model, we have to appreciate the various modifications of this model created by Tortapilil and co-workers. In 1998 and later in 2001, Kure introduced the same idea of dividing the corona current into two parts, one fast and the other slow. However, unlike the model of Deendorf and Human, he treated the charge density of the leader channel as an input parameter. As inputs of the model, he had the return stroke speed and the charge distribution of the leader channel. He also assumed that the corona current consists of two parts, one part coming from the leader core and the other part from the corona sheath. In the model, corona current moves downwards with the speed of light. From the model, he managed to predict the current at the channel base, the spatial variation of the current along the return stroke channel 
and the electromagnetic fields. In 2006, Kure and Rakow used the same ideas but used the model to predict the return stroke speed. The input parameters of the model are the charge distribution of the leader channel, the corona current decay time constant, and the channel base current. In the model, as in the previous models, the corona current moves downwards with the speed of light. The model managed to predict the return stroke speed, how the current varies along the return stroke channel and the electromagnetic fields. The next development in engineering return stroke models was the introduction of the concept of current dissipation models by Kure in 2009. Recall that in current generation models, the return stroke current is generated by the corona current. In the current dissipation models, the current injected at the channel base is dissipated by the corona current. This is the reason for naming them as current dissipation models. In this model type, the return stroke is simulated by an injected current at the channel base that travels upwards with the speed of light. Of course, one can select any other speed if necessary. As the return stroke current travels upwards, it will give rise to corona currents, but in contrast to current generation models, where the corona current travels downwards, in these models, it travels upwards with the speed of light. Or, as I said before, one can select any other speed if necessary. The model has several interesting features. First note that we assume that both the injected current and the corona current travels upwards with speed of light. Now, the corona current being of opposite polarity to the injected current, it will neutralize or dissipate part of the injected current. The result is that the net current propagates upwards with a speed less than the speed of light. In the diagram, the injected current is shown in blue and the upward moving corona current is shown in green. The net current is shown in red. The most interesting feature of this model is that both the corona current and the injected current moves upwards with the speed of light while the net current propagates with the speed less than the speed of light. If you select any other speed, still the net current propagates with the speed less than the speed selected for corona and injected current. While looking at the concepts of current generation and current dissipation models, you may have noticed that the input parameters of these models could be first channel based current, second return stroke speed, third corona current decay time constants, and fourth the charge distribution along the return stroke channel. Actually, you need only three of these parameters in constructing the model. The model will predict the fourth parameter. For example, if you assume the channel base current, charge distribution along the return stroke channel, and the channel base current as input parameters, then the model can be used to predict the return stroke speed. We have seen that in current generation models, corona current travels downwards and in current dissipation models, it travels upwards. What about the corona current in current propagation models? Consider a channel element in a negative return stroke. When the injected current reaches this element, some positive charge will be deposited on the channel element. As a result, the current leaving the element will have slightly smaller amplitude than the one that entered into the element. The deposition of the positive charge can be think of as a corona current that moves into the corona sheet. That is, the corona current in these models do not travel along the return stroke channel. It is a stationary corona current. For the moment, let us keep this in mind. Now, 
let me summarize the contents or the basic constituents of the engineering return stroke models. Let me summarize them one by one. First, predicted or specified channel base current. Second, upward moving corona currents. Third, stationary corona currents. Fourth, downward moving corona currents. And of course, it is also necessary to have as input parameters the various speeds associated with these current components. But the big question is, can we derive all these features from a single model? This is the task we have at hand. Let us now divert from return stroke models and think about the following problem. Consider a transmission line in air. It could be a vertical or a horizontal transmission line. If you inject a current into this transmission line at any given point, half of the injected current will propagate in one direction and the other half will propagate in the opposite direction. This shows that if we treat the return stroke channel as a transmission line, then half of the injected corona current should propagate upwards and the other half should propagate downwards. Using this information as guidance, we are now ready to introduce the most general engineering return stroke model. Let us call this most general engineering return stroke model the current model or C model. In the model, we have the injected current at the channel base. Moreover, the corona current at any point on the channel will have two identical components, each equal to half of the corona current, one part traveling upwards and the other part traveling downwards. All the current pulses travel along the channel with the speed of light. And this is the mother of all engineering return stroke models. Now, let me stress the following. All the engineering models available today can be described as a special case of the current model or in short, C model. Let us now summarize what we have discussed so far. In the current generation models, we only have the downward moving corona current and the current at the channel base is created by the cumulative effects of the downward moving corona currents. The speed of propagation of the downward moving corona current is equal to the speed of light. In the current dissipation models, we have a current injected at the channel base and an upward moving corona current. Both these currents propagate upwards with the speed equal to the speed of light and of course the creator of the model can select any other speed. But on physical grounds the speed of light is the correct speed. This is the case because the return stroke is assumed to be a transmission line in air. In this model the upward corona current will neutralize or dissipate the injected current. In general the resultant net current will propagate upwards with a speed which is less than the speed of the injected and corona current. However, there are special cases in which the net current also travels upward with the same speed as the injected and corona currents. These special cases are realized by selecting the corona current in a special way. This I will come back to shortly. Let us look again at CP models. Recall that in these models, the corona current is stationary. That is, it does not travel along the return stroke channel. The stationary corona current takes away charge from the injected current and as a result, the amplitude of the injected current that leaves the channel element is less than the injected current entering the channel element. Now, in current propagation models, we do not have any moving corona currents. That is, the corona currents do not travel along the return stroke channel. 
then how can we derive it from the C model? Are the current propagation models belong to a new category of models? Let us investigate again on what happens in the current propagation models. Consider a single channel element on the return stroke channel. Assume the return stroke to be a negative return stroke. As the injected current passes through this channel element, positive charge is deposited along the return stroke channel and the amplitude of the injected current that leaves the element is reduced. But the same process can be visualized as follows. Assume that as the injected current passes through the channel element, a negative corona current enters into the return stroke channel. That is, positive charge is deposited on the corona sheath and negative charge enters as the corona current into the return stroke channel. And this neg corona current travels upwards with the sp same speed as the injected current. The amplitude of the injected current is not modified during the encounter. However, what is leaving the element is the injected current plus the corona current which has the opposite polarity. Thus, the net current leaving the element is less than the current that enters the element. This scenario is identical to the first scenario with the stationary corona current. This means that the CP models are a special case of the CD models. Let me now show you some specific examples. Let me give you some information on CP models. First, all the CP models are a special case of the CD models. Second, if you select the corona current in the CD model so that it will not completely eat into the front of the injected current, you will get a CP model. I will describe this in little bit more details later. Third, the speed of propagation you assume for the injected and corona current in the CD model would be the speed of propagation of the current in the CP model. Consider the following CD model. It has the following features. First, the injected current moves upward with speed V. The corona current moves upward also with speed V. The corona current at any level is given by the injected current at that level multiplied by any arbitrary function of Z. Z is the height along the return stroke channel say AZ. That is, the corona current is described by this equation. This will be a CP model with return stroke speed equal to V. The current at any point on the channel in this model is given by this equation. So here you can see the injected current and it is multiplied by this function A dash Z. So if you recall the current propagation models, you will immediately recognize that this is a current propagation model where the current amplitude decreases as it travels upwards according to this function. And this function is related to this function A Z through this equation. In this presentation, I have shown you that the C model or the current model is the mother of all engineering models. All the engineering models we have at present can be extracted from this more general current model or C model. Now, there is a final question. Is there a physical basis for the C model or the current model? Let us consider the following problem. What will happen if you inject a current into a transmission line where the current amplitude is large enough to cause corona? In this case, as the injected current moves upwards at each point along the transmission line, 
it will give rise to a corona current, half of which travels upwards and the other half travels downwards. This is what happens whenever you have corona in a transmission line. The upward moving corona current eat into the upward moving injected current making the net current moving upwards with a speed less than the speed of light. This physical phenomenon has all the ingredients of the engineering return stroke models. So that means actually there is a physical basis for the C model or the current model. Now we have come to the end of our presentation and let me show you the conclusions. All engineering return stroke models can be extracted from a more general engineering return stroke model which we refer to as the current model or the C model. In the C model you have three basic ingredients. The injected current, the upward moving corona current and the downward moving corona current. Remove the injected current and the upward moving corona current from the C model and you will end up with the CG model or current generation model. In the current generation model, you have only a downward moving corona current. Remove the downward moving corona current from the C model and you will end up with the current dissipation model. In the current dissipation model, you have only an injected current and an upward moving corona current. In the current dissipation models, select the corona current and the speed of propagation of the currents in a special way and you will end up with current propagation model. Thus, we can claim that the current model or the C model is the mother of all engineering return stroke models. Thank you very much.